to be daring, baby, dance the night away I let my head down if I won Don't you just get tired chasing fame and being pretty all the time Doesn't sound like fun Alright guys, uh, fourth, fifth, or sixth time around trying to do this voiceover. Now I'm in my office. By office, I mean bathroom. The only place that I can get any privacy or peace and quiet. The only room that I'm actually capable of locking the door. So, that's where we're at now. Um, this is a tips and tricks tutorial, so let's get into it. Uh, right now you see me base coating. Um, if this was a person, I would be dehydrating, priming twice, and then base coating, and then doing my construction with either acrylic, builder gel, builder in a bottle, poly gel, whatever, what have you. I always use a gel based coat and then build on top of that. I don't get any lifting. It works for me. So if you come across somebody that you know has issues with lifting, especially with acrylic, I suggest you try it. A thin base coat, you know, scrub it into the nail and then don't 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 wipe off the sticky layer. Just um, leave the sticky layer there and then apply your acrylic or builder gel. But back to the nail, Beetles Gel Polish 314. Um, when I first started doing nails, I needed to invest in nail supplies. And Beetles was a great investment for me. I think I got 20 bottles of colored gel polish plus three. Um, you know, a base, a matte top coat, and a shiny top coat, non-white. All of that came in a collection for like 29 bucks. So pretty much 23 bottles for 29 bucks. And I'm still using them. The only ones that I ran out of was white and black, and I bought them again. I just applied a uh, nail foil glue from Beetles, and it wrinkled on me. I think mine went bad. I've had it all a year. A year or more pissed me off I'm pointing out at it yelling <laughs> oh lord uh yeah so we're gonna be doing an ombre and the reason I'm doing it like this is to not add any bulk to the nail that's the best way I can put it I hate I hate trying to do a design on a nail especially a short nail and then having to encapsulate that design and file over it and then I file into it. I have such a hard time keeping my designs thin on short nails so I've learned a lot of little shortcuts. This is one of them. Do you see how thin this is? Just a layer of polish and then this foil. It's literally paper thin. I'm not gonna file into this. There's no way. Even on a short nail. And look at the holographics on that foil. Oh my god. I want this set on me. I want a nude set with this ombre on me. This is the Wapazima collection. Um, I got it from Mary Kate to Cosmetics, the unicorn nail collection. It comes with four jars of acrylic. I don't end up using this, but I can tell you that jar is half full for a reason because I love, 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 love that color. And I met her on Etsy. It's Mary Kate Cosmetics. And she sells acrylics that are beautiful from the Wapizima collections. And I'm telling you, they're beautiful. The monomer I'm using is the cotton candy scented monomer from Enel Couture. Um, I don't know why I'm pointing and putting my fingers up. Whatever. Whatever I was thinking. Thought I was going to talk to you while I worked, but... Voice over Sierra is way cooler. Don't worry, you ain't missing out on a thing. 
So here's what I'm trading it out for. This is Eno Couture's cover pink. Eno Couture? Yeah. Eno Couture's cover pink. So I use a really wet bead, a really small wet bead, and I place it right at the top of my design. And I just kind of pat so that it's a little bit transparent and you can see a little bit of the design under it and just kind of blend it till I'm happy with how it's blended. And then I go in at the top and apply another bead for coverage at the cuticle and kind of just, you know, drag that down until I get to my blended part that I don't really want to mess with and I just start swiping. All the while watching my sides. I never want to build up bulk on my sides, especially when I'm going to be encapsulating this design in clear. Look at that. I did so good. That's such a pretty nail. Don't, oh my gosh, there's nothing anybody can tell me about this nail. <laughs> you can't tell me nothing about this nail. This nail is just classically beautiful. Oh my goodness. Oh, yeah, making an appearance again. Oh, needs its time in the sun. Hey, girl. <laughs> Sierra, put that damn nail away. Oh, yeah. Oh, my goodness. All right. Uh, obviously, I'm going in with some gel plush, it looks like. Do I know what I... Oh, I did a marble. I did a marble. This is Savvy Land's Metallic Gel Pot. Um, this is the Blue Gold Gel Pot. And then this is Unicornio Glitter 2 from the Wapizima Collection. Look at that. So pretty. Oh, I wish you could have seen that glitter in real life. It reminds you of Frozen. It's so pretty. So what I'm doing here is I want to do a encapsulated glitter nail. And I always do this on short nails, always, so that I can take down my bulk and not have to worry about it being thick whatsoever. So what I'm doing is I'm laying down this metallic gel paint so that when I put my glitter on top of it, I can keep my glitter super, super thin, even bare in some spots. And you're not going to know it. Nobody is going to know that I put a metallic blue color under it because it's blending perfect with the glitter. Oh, I lied. This is not a marble nail, but I did think about what their nail is, and it's going to be a marble nail. <laughs> so stay tuned for that. But back to this nail. This is just glitter. So you can see how thin I can keep it, and the glitter just blends into the background. If I would have wanted to get a full coverage nail, with glitter and then encapsulate it, I would have had to do quite a thick coat of glitter. If I would have nothing under it but a clear nail, in order for you to not see through the glitter and see through that see-through nail underneath, I would have had to add quite a bit of glitter and it would have made it thick, especially on a short nail. So what did I do? Put down a base coat of something that's gonna blend in with that glitter. And then add as much as I need to make me personally happy. So you can add whatever you want to make you personally happy. I'm just adding a couple little beads here and there, kind of keeping them wet. Watching my side profile, making sure I'm not losing the shape of my nail. Making sure that, you know, I have glitter everywhere. At least it looks like I have glitter everywhere. And then this is still a super, super thin nail. I can try to lay down a base of acrylic, a color that would have matched this glitter, and then did the glitter, and it would have been thick, especially for a short nail. Or, ooh, look at that. So pretty. And you can't tell. Look at that. It's super thin. So, yeah, super, super thin. It's like a little coat of gel polish. There's no way I'm going to file into that when I encapsulate it. You know, like I said, here comes the marble nail. And this is my method for marbling. You don't have to do it this way. You can do it on the nail. You can do whatever you want. You know, I took a really dark burgundy and then a glitter in the middle and a very little bit of lavender. Whatever lighter color you have, um, it's going to overpower your marble. 
So you really try to stay thin with the lighter color that you're putting in. Right here, I'm doing a base coat on the nail, um, a wet base coat. I'm going to lay this over top of a wet base coat just to help it spread out. So I did not cure that base coat. I'm just, you know, kind of wiggling, wiggling, wiggling. Wiggle, wiggle, wiggle. And I'm trying to kind of get that darker purple in there, that glitter. This nail turned off so beautiful. All right, and look at that. Look how quick that was. That's so much faster than building an acrylic nail. And this video is sped up, but it's only sped up times two. This is seriously a super fast nail. And then I wipe the sides just so that I'm keeping my shape. I don't want to lose that shape ever. All the way throughout building a nail, building a set, I'm doing everything I can to keep that shape. So then here we are with encapsulating. This is the fun part. So now all my nails are super thin. Can't, can't beat it. I'm using Mia Secrets Clear Acrylic Powder. Usually I use a Crystal Clear from Enel Couture on my customers, but this is just a demonstration. And I love Mia Secret too, don't. Don't get me wrong, Mia Secret is a great clear. There is nothing wrong with this clear. I get very little bubbles in Mia Secret's clear, and it is super simple to work with. I just, for some reason, I always gravitate to Enel Couture, and you know, it's my go to ordering platform. It's just my go to. Now they. They ship in five days. Literally, well, they ship it in three days. You get it in five. Here I am laying down, you know, part of my apex, and I'm picking up fairly wet beads. Um, and I'm always patting. You know, you don't pat like you will pick up a wet bead. God, I want to show you in here. I should have showed you. This is me just patting the nail into shape, making sure my side walls are angling in towards the apex. I do not want them hanging over that nail. And I don't want them going straight up and down. That's a lot of filing. Do you see how? I'm pretty sure I'll show it to you here in a minute. So this is me doing the cuticle area. And then right when it gets down to that middle bead where the apex is, I'm going to start kind of patting it because I don't want it to go too much further. It's where the apex is. So I just want it all to blend. And then I'm just going to pat. I'm going to pat for the air bubbles. I'm going to pat for the sides. I'm going to pat the end of that bead so that it blends. I'm just going to pat until there is no more movement with that clear bead. I'm just, do you see? Do you, yeah. You know, it goes from being almost nothing at the cuticle to, you know, a slow slope up towards the middle of the nail and then it's going to go back down towards the tip slope down and I'm talking about the the structure on the top directly down the middle you know it goes from thin to the cuticle thicker towards the middle of the nail and then sloping back down to thin and then here I am at the tip it was really cold in my house but I won't lie, I do encapsulate in a lot of smaller beads because I like to control my product. And if I do it all in one, it's hard on me. I only use like a size 12 brush. Uh, but I start to lose the shape. Um, I'm going to have to start practicing with that. Here I am holding the nail down and letting gravity do the work for me. And... You'll always see me do that when I build a nail. Um, I will hold the nail down until I don't want the bead to move any further. Once the bead starts to go a little bit mad, I'll just tip the nail up and work it the way I want it to. Do you see the shape of the bead or the nail? It's a pretty nice nail. Um, not a lot of work left to do on it when I file. And then here we are encapsulating the glitter nail. Of course, starting at the cuticle, I will leave 
put my bead a little bit lower than the cuticle and then push it up into the cuticle, all the while tipping the nail down so that gravity can do the work for me. Once the bead stops moving, I will start patting it so that I can pat the air bubbles out and pat the side walls in. I want to keep the shape all the while making sure there's no bubbles, getting it down into that glitter really well, um, and then making sure that it transitions. You know, I don't want a cliff at the end of the bead. I want it to kind of blend down into the nail so that when I put my next bead up to it, it it's easier to blend it. There I am, I lay my bead, I pat my sidewalls, pat my sidewalls, hold the nail down, always, you know, wiping down the sidewalls so that the bead doesn't flow over the edge and then I'll lose my shape. Once it stops moving, I just start to pat. And these are pretty wet beads. They're not soaking wet to where they're just dripping off my brush. But they're close to it, and I don't lose control of it. So, you know, you can't really encapsulate with a dry bead. It, it's not, it's not good. It's gonna leave air bubbles, I guess. Do you see my sidewalls? They angle in. That's what all that padding is for. Consistently, once my bead goes a little bit matte and it doesn't look like a puddle of water anymore. I'm padding and I don't stop padding until I'm doing nothing anymore until that bead is literally not moving on me I will continue to pat because if I leave the bead alone while it's still able to move it's gonna do what it does best it's gonna move and then I'm gonna you know it's gonna move where it wants to be and that's not where I want it to be so yeah all right well I think you got the idea of what I did here today. You know, um, pretty much encapsulating gel polish, nail foil, um, glitter. Ooh, it needs more at the cuticle if you notice. But I think you got the idea of how I keep my nails super thin before I encapsulate them so that I don't have to worry about filing into my design when there's barely any thickness to the design at all. Very rarely will you see me build an acrylic design with acrylic and then encapsulate it. I don't mind building acrylic designs. I really don't, especially on a long nail. It's great. But on short nails, you got to take shortcuts. And, you know, it's like fail safe for me. I don't even like gambling with acrylic on a short nail. I really don't. This is way quicker. And... It guarantees me a beautiful nail without any any type of thickness I love I love a short thin delicate elegant nail it's what I like I don't like thick overly square bulky short nails I don't like that I don't like it looking like somebody has a chiclet on their finger it's not cute honey it's not cute <laughs> I don't, I don't care. So, all right, I'm going to let you go and you guys can enjoy the top coating. You know, I'm going to finish file off camera, but I hope you guys have a blessed day. Stay safe, wear your mask, protect your neighbors, you know, do whatever you have to do to stay safe out here. And I hope everybody, you know, that watches this likes and subscribes if you haven't subscribed yet what are you waiting for like there is no reason that you haven't subscribed it is free it is totally free what are you wait like don't you want free things don't you like just subscribe get as much free stuff as you can <laughs> i mean you know if you watch the video this far um obviously i must have did a little bit of something right i kept your attention this long so you know subscribe there's more to come. I'm getting better at this. My editing skills are, you know, not professional, but they're there. So <laughs> have a great day, guys. Um, I really appreciate you and, you know, stay blessed and subscribe. Bye.
Much better. 